Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisor Channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. And yes, all is saved. You can sleep well at night. Bitcoin has held 25,000. Yes, we overshot the mark here. Destroying the uh, daily box of peace and prosperity. However, we are still in a weekly uptrend, as you can see, higher highs and higher lows. And until we get a candle bodied candle closure below that wick at 24.8, not ready to call it uh, a, a, not ready to throw in the towel, still going with the uh, weekly uptrend. And I do believe that this area will hold at 20,800. Um, these are some high volume vector candles, volume nodes, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is where the volume has come in, very likely that area holds it's okay to get a wick down as long as we do not have a daily candle body closure below that pivot at 24.778. so how did we get to where we're at today right we've been talking about it for some time that 27,500 target which just got smashed through was not uh what i was hoping for there but hey the nasdaq absolutely getting uh well Shaving off a bit from the top side of the range did come down to our box of priests and prosperity and has held, uh, has not filled the gap yet, which tells me there's probably more downside to come. If this thing is going to hold up going into next week, we don't want to see a big red candle right through that zone. We want to see a bounce here. If there's any hope for the bulls out there, you want to see a bounce first, um, but not likely to uh, be the case as Evergrande, it's the big commercial company, uh, commercial real estate company out of China has filed for bankruptcy yesterday and they're restructuring the loan. Some, I don't know, is it $400 billion of monies? They're having to restructure the loan. It's bad for the market. China's slowing down. They're not reporting their numbers correctly. They're, and the numbers that they are reporting are bad. So those are the points for the bears, but the points for the bulls on Bitcoin is Bitcoin is the epitome of something that is anti-fragile. So even put in a historic bounce there yesterday, how big was the bounce off the low off of the exchange here? So 9% uh, off the low, 10% um, after a 14% 14% uh, uh, dive yesterday. So not bad. Okay, what else did I want to bring up? So where do we go from here? If um, in order to get bullish again, how do we define the low? We were talking about it back here, I think yesterday. I think uh, we might've been in this zone right here. We were saying, hey, look, looking for that higher low. This was an opportunity, did not happen. <clears throat> And how would we have confirmed this? We would have seen volume come in on this candle and a candle body closure above the middle peak. That would have been good enough for a nice little bounce. So we're kind of looking for the same thing. Another fake out right here, thrown back down, fake out, thrown back down. And until, you know, we can get a 15 minute above that 26.8 pressures onto the downside for uh, Bitcoin on the shorter term time frames higher term time frames really for a, a nice reversal um even this still this potentially could do it actually uh maybe on the hourly let's see on the four hour uh potential also here um but not really a clear v yep still uh, i think 27.5 is probably the area that we need to recover as that was this 618 that was the major area of interest a lot of people had their stops there so i'd probably suspect a rejection on the first pass and um, if we are going to get you know bullish relatively soon you'd want to see probably something like this where we bounce put in a higher low and something like that would look good for uh, you know a recovery out of this catastrophe, but I do suspect that it's going to take a little while for the market to you know unravel itself um, and uh, for people to come back off of ground zero. The leverage gets washed out of the system, and I did want to bring that up as well. Open interest did get shaved off from 10 billion down to 7 billion, and what you'll notice is those 20% corrections come in. 
right around 10, 12 billion. When open interest gets back up there, big warning sign, uh, corrections coming. Bringing up the uh, liquidation levels to see where potentially the market makers are gonna send price next. So uh, 27.2 is an area of interest. Also notably, uh, that is gonna be below 28.2 and below 27.5, right? So probably, I don't know, you never know what's gonna happen. Liquidations are up there, so that means Shorts are getting liquidated right at 27.2. Um, and when they get liquidated, that's going to activate longs. And that could potentially send us way back up here. So what do I think is likely to do first? Um, I think personally, um, you, you know, and again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but if the stock market wants to play out another leg down, uh, then yeah, I think Bitcoin probably dances around here and comes and swipes that uh, 23.6, maybe even you know down to 22 or 22.4. Probably gonna wipe out all that liquidity and then send it up if I had to take a guess. Additionally, what do we have supporting this narrative? And where could I flip things around really quick? I mean, any, any kind of a daily back above 27.5, uh, that'll look good, but really, um, it's going to be this last breakdown level, you know, back above this guy at 29.8 and, um, you know, probably going to be a big rip to the upside. And so another thing I noticed is that the weekly volatility has not begun to expand yet. We'll cross back up above 30,100. Where is that 30,100? And that's going to gradually come down over time. Um, we did not get a big volume candle. The week is not over. CMEs are going to close today. Let's check out the CMEs really quick as the, um, well, I guess traders are going to have a new place. Uh, Coinbase launched futures. Oh, did want to bring up the gap fill opportunity here. Uh, there is a gap to the upside and to the downside. Two uh, nice clear points of oh yeah so this would be not what you want to see you do not want to see a re gap fill rejection and then take out that low and then we're going to come down and fill this gap right over here down at twenty thousand bucks on cmes which is more in the line with twenty one thousand on spot as spot is still carrying a bit of a premium nope it's pretty pretty uh it's actually at a discount right now on coinbase or bybit Anyways, I'm going to get rid of that and bring our attention back. So we got a gap here. We got a gap here. And where else do we have a gap, right? So up here at 34,000. Okay, so this a bit of a harbinger of despair here on the daily time frame. You do have lift off above 25% for volatility and the two days about to get in there. The weekly has not expanded. So weekly expansion would get us a, it's gonna get a 50% move. So when this gets back above 25%, I'm looking for a 50% move in either direction. Remember, volatility is direction neutral. What is gonna give us the bias for direction? One is the trend. Two is the stochastic, which is currently Cross down as long as we're below 30,360. This will remain crossed down going into next week. A lot happens over the weekend, uh, this weekend, I think, as people probably going to wake up and see, oh my goodness, my coins aren't doing too well. And um, anyways, needless to say, keep an eye out over the weekend for volatility, for market makers stepping in and throwing the market away. Oh yeah, around. So what could happen potentially as the market closes here? Interesting fact, on Friday, the market will close. Uh, even for spot futures, there's what's called the gap. Well, the gap happened this morning, right there. And then, yeah, the market shuts down here shortly. The market is gonna shut down what happens during the market shutdown? Well, this gap, the market maker sent the price down to about 24,300. While all the futures markets are closed, Asia, United States, this is the gap sessions right here. 
the market maker has an opportunity to get the liquidations done. Getting the liquidations done. Hopefully that was a TP. Um, I believe it was. <laughs> and on the other side, all right. So wrapping it up here real quick, putting in another lower high on the 15 minute time frame. We'll cross down here at 26.16. If volatility was low, I mean, technically it looks like one more uh, drive down. One more drive down. But I'd be waiting for a, a 15 minute back below here if we're gonna go retest the lows. 15 minute back below 25.6. Probably gonna retest the lows. And then after the market is over, what could potentially happen? Well, the market maker just throws price down here takes out the liquidations and then runs it back up. I don't think that's going to happen over the weekend. I think, you know, uh, probably going to have some, some sideways consolidation, some volatilities over the weekend, but I don't think that the party is, uh, you know, ready to get going unless there's another major news catalyst coming out at the end of the day. Okay. So Bitcoin liquidity grabs. So bottom line is low risk, high reward opportunity. Um, I personally don't think that um, that Bitcoin is, you know, going to violate that twenty thousand um, dollar level. Even if it does, probably going to put in a big bounce. But <clears throat> those are the areas to hold up. If we start closing dailies back below there, well, it's uh, COVID times all over again, or some kind of Armageddon happened. But um, that would be general. Generally, you know, this is these are the days where you say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out the I'm gonna pull out the credit card and grab me some more bitcoins, um, buy the dip. But again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Checking in on Dixie, and he is looking pretty strong here and closing above our line that we said. Look, we don't want to close above there. If it does close above there. Not going to look pretty on that's the daily time break. that was the daily and we did get the closure above two days ago try to put in a rejection it's trying to reject but it looks like some continuation as they're having trouble selling bonds in the u.s that's that's apparently the rumor and uh if the u.s is having trouble selling bonds it's not good for the rest of the world rates are going way way up and it is not good for the rest of the world so watch out there and uh, with that said, I'll pull up Ethereum. And again, Ethereum, I do believe is going to hold up here. Probably going to fill in this wick one more time. You know, you can see now a pretty big range established. Even if we, go oh yeah. So following up on the inverted uh, head and shoulder that we talked about, let's see if the measure move did get hit. As soon as we lost this 1830 area, I said that was a technical area. As soon as we broke below there, we held onto it for so long. As soon as we broke below, I said, look, probably going to test that trend line. That's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's, that's what I said. I said shortstop here and probably going to test that trend line over time. It happened in one day, one hour. I mean, I think it was one 15 minute candle just smoked the whole thing down and target hit. Uh, what else do I want to follow? Oh yeah, just the inverted uh, shoulder here. So let's see. How close did we get? Oh, I'd say that's pretty close, guys. Pretty darn close. And what happens with the head and shoulders? Well, um, now you know. Head and shoulders, okay, measure move to the upside, never broke out, never quite, quite got the breakout we were looking for. Or, And then we said, look, if you violate the right shoulder, it's a failure pattern and you expect an equal and great, um, an equal or symmetrical opportunity in the opposite direction. And in fact, that is exactly what we got. All right, TA works out sometimes. Um, so, ETH gonna do whatever Bitcoin does, but probably a little bit more. If we do wick down here and test, I do believe the trend line is gonna hold up in the uptrend remains if we start to close back below this area at 1363 right so both pretty low risk high reward opportunities if we're long-term bullish on bitcoin you know and price gets anywhere in this zone you know pretty pretty low risk high reward opportunity i mean the rewards just go up up and up in a way 
But NASDAQ needs to pick itself up by its bootstraps, hold this level, or at least make a higher low on the weekly time frame. Um, you know, higher low and all is okay. Jackson Hole Summit meeting's coming up next week, apparently. Uh, you remember what Powell did to the markets last time? September, historically, not the best month for crypto or financial assets. So we'll be keeping a close eye on it. I hope you guys have a good weekend. I hope your hopes are not lost or worried or concerned. The picture for Bitcoin is shining brighter and brighter. BRICS nations are meeting next week. They're talking about some kind of alternative form of currency. Um, and there's just more and more people coming to the market and realizing, hey, look, I'd rather have some Bitcoin than your fiat Ponzi scheme that you're going to print and print and print. And that's that's the other narrative coming out is there will be yield curve control by the end of the year. Yield curve control. And we said the bond market could be the, the harbinger of death and despair. Bond rates go up to, you know, the mortgages at 7%, 10 years at, I think, 5% or two years at 4.9%. Um, that's going to have consequences for everyday Americans, for banks, for everybody around the world. China's already feeling it. And um, so we are not out of the woods, I don't think, with that soft landing. All right. I'll leave you with that. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Take care.